And if you have not seen this going around on Twitter, uh, yes, Ilhan Omar has been approached by protesters at a recent meeting that she had with her constituents. And I actually clipped this so I can show the full thing because the clip on Twitter doesn't show the full discussion. Let's get into it. Uh, my name is Nick. Uh, I also share a similar concern to him about uh, your continued voting for the uh, military industrial complex every single year that you've been in office. It's been increasing every single year that you've been in office. You vote for it every single time. You sent $80 billion to Ukraine, and you don't got money for my college. You don't got money for universal health care. Everybody here is broke, and you keep voting for these wars. Every single time you've been locked in step, voting for all the wars that bomb poor men, women, and children all across the world with our, our imperialism. And, you know, what, what are we supposed to do? You guys keep voting for all this stuff. We want health care. We want good infrastructure. We want to stop all these wars. And you keep voting for all of it. So what, what are we supposed to do? I mean, I mean, we keep voting, but nothing changes. I mean, what? I'm just ridiculous. Um, I will say... Um, we're so I, close to getting I have, I have, okay. you, you ask this question, let me answer it for you now. Is that okay? All right. So I've never voted for the NDAA, which is what funds the Pentagon budget. So uh, that question is probably for another member of Congress that voted. No. No, Ilhan. So you see what she's doing here, right? She's trying to flip it and directed to the Pentagon because they create the military budget. You voted to send the money, didn't you? Every single one of them, all of the progressives, all of them, they voted to send the money. So she's gonna try to toss it back to, oh, the military industrial complex, the budget. I didn't vote for the budget. It doesn't matter if you didn't vote for the budget. You voted to send the money for that piece of legislation um i took i made a promise to my constituents that that would be a bill that i would never cast a single yes vote on and i have not done that in my time in congress and i will not do that in the time i serve this district we're asking you to actually fight here, here. i answered your question okay no we're, we're asking you to stand up and to fight for us yeah just give us not evil. disagree you with ask us you a question you have another question i will circle back let me so that gentleman said we're asking you to fight for us and i want to remind you guys ilhan omar barely won her primary this time it was close But if you're here for another reason, it is quite fine too. Thank you. What other reason? Since we're How is that another reason? If you're here for another reason, that's quite fine too. That's what she said, right? Those are your constituents, Ilhan. They have every right to question you about the way that you have voted. And if you didn't want that to happen, then you shouldn't be a politician. See, I feel like this. At least Rokana admits to it. At least he doesn't run and hide when people ask these questions. He stands by what he did. Votes are public. It's not like we wouldn't have known. Talking about foreign affairs. And Congress is a very large body with 435 different perspectives. And whether or not people agree with you, your perspective is very unique within Congress, with your background, everything that you bring. And we have heard if the House flips from Representative McCarthy, that he's talking about removing you from the Foreign Relations Committee, which would be a disaster because we need your voice there. So this guy goes on to say, it would be a disaster if she's removed from the Foreign Relations Committee. That's if Kevin McCarthy um, wins back, if he wins back the House, right? He said it would be a disaster because we need your voice. You need her voice to do what, though? Because let me ask you guys a question. 
If you speak out against something, right? Let's say you talk a good game. You say what you support, you say what you're against. But when it comes time for you to vote, you vote in a different way. Does your voice really matter then? Hmm? If I tell you that I'm going to pay for your first year of tuition, or I believe in paying for your first, first year of tuition, but when it comes time for me to pay, I run and hide. Is that okay? No, it's not okay. And I don't know if that was the best analogy, but I try. JB's better at this than me. But your voice doesn't matter if you're saying one thing, but you're voting differently. Again, whether or not people agree with you or not, your, your voice is unique and very important there. If, if the House does split, is there anything that you can do to stay on the Foreign Relations Committee? Notice now, once does he mention why she's important? He goes, you're very important there. And that leads me to think he feels that she's important there because of how she looks. She's important there because she's a woman of color. She's important there because she's Muslim. That's why she's important there. Because not once does he mention anything that she's done. Um, that's, a, that's a scary thing to think about. I, I love being on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Um, and I love having the ability to, to bring my perspective um, and change the conversation, at least shape the conversation that we're having in that committee. Um, I will fight to stay on. Um, but right now we are fighting to not lose the majority. Uh, and so that is a lot of work. So she said, right now we're fighting to not lose the majority. Well, you wouldn't have to worry about that if you did what you said you were going to do. Democrats wouldn't have to worry about that if they actually did what they promised to do. Both parties are for war, so what difference does it make? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what are we losing by voting? You're, you're all, you're all yep. for war. Both of you. Well, there are you heard what he said? He said both parties are for war. So what difference does it make? And she knows that's true. This is an uncomfortable moment for her. Oh, oh, do it. Do it. Do you guys hear that? Let's let's hear it again. Because this is her letting you know, by the way, I really wonder what her uh, her fellow Democrat peers in Congress, how they how they would feel, excuse me, hiccup, how they would feel about that statement that she just made about the independent candidates. So here you have Ilhan Omar, the Democrat, telling you to vote for the independents. You guys heard that? Let's hear Both it again. Parties are for war, so what difference does it make? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what are we losing by voting? You're, you're all vote. You're all for war. Both of you. Well, there are independent candidates. Boom. All right, everybody. Justice Democrats, did you hear that? Did you hear one of your own just told them to vote for the independent candidates? And by the way, it takes a lot of guts and a lot of work to be an independent candidate. You don't have the resources. It just, so you heard it, guys. There's Ilhan Omar letting you know you got independent candidates, vote for them. You know, if you want to change the conversation. I already told you my voting record that you continue to you are say anti-war. Any ability to Ukraine is I not anti-war. We are helping. Ukraine defend themselves. It is Ukraine defense. is killing its own citizens. We are helping people survive <laughs> war. We are helping little children like you're me helping that the have been out of war. So the unless did she really use the children trope? I think she did. She just used the children trope, guys. Listen. See? Ukraine defend themselves. It is Ukraine defense. is killing its own citizens. We are helping people survive 
war. We are helping little children like me. We're helping little children. Uh, little children are being killed too. <laughs> she used him. They always go to like the women and the children. So you're just going to pretend that innocent people are not being killed. You're just going to pretend that there's no casualties. Unless, unless, you're listen, the big red button. listen, unless you have not been paid attention to the what is happening, there are millions of Ukrainians that have been displaced. There are piles of bodies that are being found in mass graves. There are little children yeah. who, has, who lives are being lost. Right. You so can sit here, yeah. you yeah. can sit here and talk, that. but unless you are someone like me that has yeah. been that child, you do not get to tell me what my votes mean and how I get to vote in supporting people. So you were that child because she's originally from Somalia, right? What is the United States government doing to people in Somalia? Her home country. Why doesn't she have that same rage and passion about the United States government dropping drones on people in Somalia, her own country? Where's that same fire? Where's that same outrage? See, she's not gonna, she's not gonna have it. And yes, I know she wrote a letter to Joe Biden last year. I went over all of that. But she's not gonna have it. You know why? Because Joe Biden did that. And he's a Democrat. And she has to back her party. This is the problem with the political parties. Your own country. Rashida Tlaib, I'll give her this. Rashida Tlaib has spoken out publicly multiple times about what is happening to the Palestinian people. Where are you, Ilhan, on what the United States government is doing to the people in your own country? What's happening to those little children, Ilhan? Are you only going to talk about the Ukrainian ones? It gets worse. The United States has started this war. All Putin said was the same there, thing. There is no one that takes you seriously when you say the U.S. started this war. You need to please. Look, you need to stop. I don't know what websites you're reading, around, but you literally are not paying attention. And it's sad. Sir, it is sad and, and dangerous that, uh, for you to say a war that has been waged by Russia was started no, by the U.S. By, by the way, this guy here, you know. <laughs> This guy here just needs to have a seat because he's just like, wait, but can I get my question in, man? Can I get my question in? It is sad. It is sad. It is sad. It is sad. And I hope that you find it. President John F. Kennedy said we should. Yes. Okay. Russia should right. put Let's go. nuclear right. weapons right. in right. Cuba. Right. 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 Why are we putting right. nuclear right. weapons right. in Ukraine? Right. It doesn't make any sense. There are no, That's nuclear, why the war there are no nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Stop yeah. saying yeah. ridiculous what, what things. Why don't you stand up against NATO, though? Why don't you push back? Why don't you stand up and push back against NATO? That's the question to Ilhan. That is a very ridiculous thing for you to say. Ukraine disarmed itself. There are no nuclear weapons in Ukraine. My God. Yes. What I wanted to ask is uh, the uh, midterms are coming up in a few weeks. Um, I'm just wondering if there's anything, because like the Democrats are in major trouble to lose uh, both chambers of uh, people. Joe Biden said, we are headed towards Armageddon. We are at risk of a nuclear war. And this guy, after that whole fiasco, this guy stands up and goes, um, I'm wondering about the midterms. You see, this happened last night, too, during the Ro Khanna interview. I'm wondering about the midterms after someone is just talking about a nuclear war. This is where a lot of Americans, this is where their minds are at. They're focused on a damn election instead of focusing on the fact that you may not even be here.
Bye bye. Now people, they're calling her out. Like it's it's because you know Ilhan has been a hypocrite. Now here's Danny Haifong. So Danny Haifong said Ilhan Omar is spreading Russia Gate disinformation to avoid answering legitimate questions, like why she would sign off on arming Ukraine when this has brought the world closer to nuclear war. When progressives sound like neocons, they're probably just neocons. And this is in response to this message that she said here. She was retweeting Jose and she said, I'm sorry, you all aren't anti-war protesters. You are dangerous propagandists who are literally making a mockery of the anti-war movement. I have never had the pleasure of responding to uh, Russia ridiculous internet disinformation in person before thank you for the opportunity peace and she still didn't answer the question and she goes on here i'm amazed at the nerve that some people have to not be upset with the country literally waging the war but at the country defending itself and those helping them to do that and i just want to be clear i've been very vocal about where i stand on this issue I said all three were in the wrong, Russia, Ukraine, and the United States. I was even told by one of these people tonight, it's America that started the Russia war. Seriously, what the fuck? It wouldn't have gone that far, Ilhan. It wouldn't have gone that far if you would have just answered the, que the question as to why you voted the way that you did. Now, even Aaron Monte is calling her out. Like it's like I said, she, oh boy. Speaking of making a mockery of the anti-war movement, here's Ilhan Omar in March making a statement that sounds a lot like the protesters who she now accuses of spreading Russian ridiculous internet disinformation. So here's a tweet that she had in March. So this was March 8th. Hey, that's my birthday. March 8th, 2022 this year. This is from Ilhan Omar. The consequences of flooding Ukraine with billions of dollars in US weapons, likely not limited to just military specific equipment, but also including small arms plus ammo are unpredictable and likely disastrous. Specifically, or excuse me, especially when they are given to paramilitary groups without accountability. So what changed? Did you, did you guys change? I didn't change. Seemed like to me, she flip-flopped. So I don't know, again, if she even remembers this tweet, but it happened. It happened, Ilhan. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. 